Hello, and welcome back to the Give and Go. I'm your co-host, Reno, so here with my boy, Soltero. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing today? <laughs> How are we doing in the chat? Because I'm seeing it so active already. I'm seeing all the comments. I'm seeing all the Madrid fans that are here in attendance, showing themselves out, talking their shit, and rightfully so. Because I had mentioned yesterday, if Real Madrid pulls off a victory at the Etihad, however they do it, it's going to be a historic result and ultimately that's what it is man madrid is in the semifinals of the champions league winning on penalties the legend of looning was born today <laughs> april 17th 2024 where, where? The, baby was born. Where? <laughs> the birth of loon and baby for real <laughs> for all of real madrid fans getting two big stops in this penalty shootout yeah. one of them a stinker from bernardo silva maybe we talk about that a little bit we more got a lot to talk about and then a second really good stop against uh mateo kovacic ultimately being the difference to get Madrid through to the semifinals. To the semifinals, absolutely. In a game that had so many important uh, turning points, a game that had so many great matchups with Kyle Walker showing up in this match, yeah. going toe to toe with Vinny Jr. and Grealish going toe to toe with Carvajal. I mean, let's address initial reactions, initial yeah, comments, let's do because that. for me personally, Go ahead. just seeing this scoreline, here's what I have to say about this. I know it might sound like I'm salty. It might sound like I'm coming from a place of hate, and mm. I'm really not. I'm, tr I'm really trying to watch the game from an objective point of view. I have no stake in this. I'm no fan of either team. Right. But I do feel that the better team lost today. I think the better team lost today. And the thing is, I think most Madrid fans would actually agree with me mm -hmm. if they see truth. And the way that this match played out, bro, Manchester City had so many chances to put the match away, and ultimately they did not come through because you know why? The one thing that Real Madrid did do well today was show that greatness, show that football heritage that only they, Real Madrid, can tap into. And that's what we saw happen in extra time and then the penalty shootout guiding them to this victory. But I will say, I just don't feel like the best team ended up as victors today. Yeah, this was an incredibly gritty match. You know, there was nothing truly concrete. The goal that Manchester City got when they were up against it, needing a goal to tie the game, ultimately was a bit of a bobble after, after a Jeremy Doku shot. De Bruyne puts it away beautifully, roofs it past Lunin. But beyond that, man, it was all Manchester City, as you were saying, but just nothing concrete. But I do have to say, I have never seen Real Madrid defend as much as they did today there was a moment like in the 75th minute when we both were like oh shit we forgot vinicius rodrigo and jude fucking bellingham were on the pitch yeah. because they barely touched yeah. the ball we're talking about the mighty real madrid one of the best front three in europe and they could barely get a nick at the ball that's how madrid won today though and the thing is there's no controversy. And I give Madrid their full credit here because the one thing that they did do exceptionally well today was defend. So I give it yeah. to them. They did Dude, earn no, it that way. You're right. You're right. Because if you look at the last game, all three goals from Manchester City came from outside the box. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I noticed today, bro, every time there was a sliver of space outside the box for Rodri, for Gavardiol, for Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden. Dude, they pressed so well, man. Yeah. They stopped those opportunities so well that we really didn't see any outside the box opportunities that were truly dangerous, bro. And so once they couldn't do that, they had to go look towards the wings where... Fucking Jack Grealish was so involved today. Oh, my goodness. And Bernardo Silva. And ultimately, it was Doko who was the one who was able to find the space and create some havoc. And then yeah. Kevin De Bruyne gets at the end of it through a Rudiger mistake. But you're right. The defending today was champion-esque. Yeah. It was absolutely worthy of getting the victory here. So you're right. I don't want to downplay that whatsoever. Yeah. I just am truly surprised that Manchester City ultimately was not able to come through, man, with the second goal. And that's another point that I think it has to be made is... I do think this is on Manchester City. This is all on them. For as good and as long as Madrid defended, this is on Manchester City to not, for not going through, bro. When you think about the goals that they conceded, half of them I thought were way too simplistic to concede in a quarterfinal setting. Going back to the first leg, where the goal that Rodrigo scored after he cooked Manuel Akanji, I thought that was so simplistic. It's root one football. You can't concede a goal like that if you want to be champions of Europe. And basically, the same exact thing happened today. How did Madrid get their goal? It 
it was just through simple play on the right wing. Ruben Diaz refuses to get tight on Vinicius and Rodrigo over both legs because he doesn't back himself in a battle against pace. And Madrid, take advantage of that. For me, Akanji and Ruben Diaz are a liability against sheer pace, and that's why they conceded two goals, two very valuable goals that you, if you had Kyle Walker, for example, defending in those situations, Madrid don't get those two goals, bro. Yeah. So I think defensively, this is on Manchester City for not going through. And then offensively, they just could not get everybody involved. Phil Foden, I thought, was all right today. Again, though, credit to Madrid for making that happen. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. I don't want to look at the chat, bro. I want to. I want to maintain eye contact with you right now. I don't want to look at the chat. Yeah. I don't want to look. Let's look at the chat because we have some super chats that just came in. We must acknowledge the super chats, folks. To start off, we have a ten dollars super chat. If you could just click on that to to for me, please. Uh, from Osvaldo Renteria, ten dollars. That's all he sent. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Thank man. You. Thank you. That really helps with the pain. Five dollars from or two dollars from Mateo Pegasus, one of our favorites. Mia San Mia, we aren't supposed to make it this far. I mean, yeah, this is giving me shades of mm -hmm. that incredible Madrid run that they went on a few years ago when people doubted them every single stage and they just proved each, they just proved all those people wrong. This time it hasn't been like that, but in this match specifically, they were the underdogs. And once again, man, they prove people and more specifically the give and go wrong. Yeah. B Torres 5X says, don't ever disrespect Byron. Love the pod boys. We will talk we'll about talk Byron about that very, too. very soon. Uh, let me get the chat right here in front of you so you can see it, uh, Salts. And then uh, Joel Alvarado sends $2. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Hector Uribe, 5 bucks, 11 likes on this comment. Back-to-back -back Champions Leagues are only meant for the kings of Europe. Both of you should go to Madrid and apologize. A la Madrid. Now, this one's interesting because I'm already seeing so many uh, shouts for apology letters. I'm seeing the shouts for uh, yeah. trips to Madrid. We acknowledge this because I remember last year you said you would write a 10-page apology letter if Real Madrid won that matchup. But this time you decided to switch it up going into this match because... Wait, what are we talking about here? When I asked <laughs> if you would write an apology letter if... Madrid would win this time around. You said no, because this time it's actually oh. much more close. Oh, it's way more close. Yeah. yeah. And I knew that going into this whole tie, not even going into the second leg, going into this first leg, I considered this matchup to be completely different compared to last year because Madrid have progressed a lot over the last 12 months. I knew this was going to be a different game. Honestly, though, I did not expect Madrid to defend so, so well, though. So I will insane, give them man. that. Rudiger was fucking incredible today. Uh, Nacho even stepped up. Carvajal, Nacho was good. Carvajal, man, absolute masterclass. Yeah. Damn near dying on the pitch for his team. And Lunin, San Lunin, turning into fucking prime Casillas in the penalty shootout. Shout out to Madrid and how they defended. Let's keep looking at some of these super chats. Eduard Flores and Sharon KT sent us some super chats. Thank you so much, guys. That's all love. Thank you guys so much. Luis Melo, five bucks. I was in class watching the Man City game, and I couldn't really see the penalties. But after I saw the result, I was shocked and heartbroken. Hey, shout out for prioritizing your education over uh, this football <laughs> match, my friend. That's actually very respectable, man. Absolutely. Wilkie said that five bucks says the quarterfinals was thriller. It really was, man. For it to end like this, I honestly am surprised that this was the first penalty shootout that we've seen so far in the Champions League quarterfinals because they were all so tight. They were all yes. so intense. Yes. And it was this one that ended up going to penalties with Real Madrid winning. Adolfo, five bucks. Guys, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for the love so far. I absolutely appreciate it. Love the pod, boys. A la Madrid. These Madrid fans are celebrating, and rightfully they should, because with this victory, man, I think they're the favorites for the title now. Madrid? Yeah. Yeah. They're the favorites, in my opinion. Favorites, I think you could definitely say that. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, though, no, no, right? No, 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 no. But favorites out of the remaining teams, you could definitely say they're the most in form. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Let's go up. Let's see what we got. Eduardo Vaz21 says, I love your channel. The community you guys are building, and especially you guys. But you guys are jinx. Y'all bet it on Barca and lost. Arsenal and lost. Man City and lost. I mean, he's got a point here. Let's, look, football, let's look at the matchups. And that's football, but let's look at the matchups. We remember, uh, technically, we bet it on PSG. So that one I would... Uh, I would uh, readjust because if you go back to our Champions League preview, we did go with PSG. We switched, but hey, it's the initial preview. That, it's the initial prediction that counts on this one. Arsenal, you're right. Absolutely. And Manchester City losing on penalties. I mean, bro, that's football. 
that is football, man. These are tough games to predict. I bet there's no one out there that actually got all four games correctly predicted because these games are just back and forth. It is so close. I'm not going to lose my mind over that. But thank you so much for the love, bro. For and, real, thank you. And let's also remember, De Bruyne, after scoring her first goal, had a really open opportunity where the ball kind of found its way to him at the top of the box. He's wide open for it. Still like a good, what, 14, 15 yards out, but he ends up just putting it over the bar. It was a really clear-cut opportunity for De Bruyne and you thought that he would put it away to make it two two goals to Manchester City, but he just couldn't. Those are the margins, though. Mm -hmm. If you can't finish those chances, there is the possibility you get punished for them. That's exactly what happened in penalties. Yeah, they, they, they really did. But for me, it's that Bernardo Silva penalty that really bothers me. Yeah. That that really bothers me that he approached it that way and that had he scored that, I think the momentum in the penalty shootout would have been much different. But he stunk it, bro. He stunk it. Yeah, and then bad. Kovacic... Uh, likewise, shooting a really predictable penalty. B. Torres, $2, says, where are all my Arsenal loser fans at? We're going to talk about Arsenal in a second because they also are going to get these words, man. Daniel Lizarraga, Lizarraga, one of my favorite names to say. Thank you so much for the super chat, bro. Thank you. Reynoso and Saltero, you both have to write an apology letter to my Bayern Munich. And Arsenal will always be that small club everyone feels bad for. I mean, you're, you're, it's facts on the Arsenal topic, on the Bayern thing. I'm not apologizing to Bayern, bro. They've won so much. Y'all are fine. Y'all don't need our <laughs> apology, man. Y'all don't need it whatsoever. Joel Alvarado, five bucks. He says, I wasn't sure if I watched Real Madrid or Prime Atletico. What a masterclass in the back. Yeah, an absolute masterclass in the back. It was that classic Manchester City probing, though, where they don't necessarily like to penetrate as much because they want a lot of players behind the action. And Madrid... We're ready for it. They were completely ready for that type of approach for Manchester City. Manchester City tried to throw everything at them, but they just could not break that back line. Again, you already said it. Carvajal, Rudiger, Nacho, they were all phenomenal today. Yeah, incredible performance. And, bro, are we going to see their Klassiker in the final? Says Sagar Super Chat. We were talking about this yesterday, man. Like, that actually is in the it's works. It's crazy. Works. And once it's the semifinals, anything can happen. Yeah. It really can. Like, there are favorites going into these matches, but... Dude, if we see an all-German final, then I'm all for it. Here's my only criteria. If one of the German teams goes through, then I want the other one to go through. Only under that, okay. only under that circumstance. Yeah, if yeah, uh, yeah. Bayern Munich finds a way to defeat Real Madrid, then I'll be rooting for Dortmund over PSG and vice versa. But if Real Madrid just blows out Bayern, there's no need to have Dortmund in that final. No disrespect. <laughs> but yes, let's continue talking. What else are you guys seeing? What are you guys saying? You guys can finally stop sucking Guardiola's dick now, says Tony Williams. There is one thing to point out about the Madrid fans in the chat is that in the time that we've had the podcast, this is the first time that we've ever been wrong about Real Madrid because we were the ones that were actually spewing the Manchester City uh, uh, truth last year before everyone else kind of got on that hype train of Manchester City being the team to watch. We were the ones talking about Manchester City will trump Real Madrid. There's, there's a shift happening in the Champions League and they had to live through that, these Madrid fans. And finally, they are having their moment and props to them. They're enjoying it because this chat is fucking active, man. Yeah, it's a good yeah. day to be a Real Madrid yeah. fan for sure. Again, just a defensive masterclass and winning on penalties, bro. Like it's huge, especially considering you're on the road at the Etihad where there was a good 45 minutes where Madrid couldn't touch the ball. Like the first half was good for Real Madrid. Honestly, the first 20 minutes, there was a little bit of ebb and flow where Madrid would get on the ball. They would actually disrupt play in the midfield and attack. They would find Vinicius. They would find Rodrigo through really good play from Camavinga and Valverde. But that died in the second half. There was nothing offensively going for Real Madrid in that second half. And that, that's why I'm not too like... You know, I want to give Real Madrid their credit, but they got dominated today for certain parts of the match, man. And there were moments where this thing could have flipped completely and Manchester City, had they finished their chances off, are winning this game 2-1, 3-1, and they're through to the semifinals, man. Yeah. The margins were so small. That's why I, I give props to Real Madrid for somehow surviving that onslaught, yeah. which is the toughest onslaught to survive. But, man, this really could have gone either way is yeah. my whole purpose of this de debate yeah, yeah. here. They could have gone either way. Yeah, and at, at, and at the end of the day, the result is a draw. There was not an actual winner here. Madrid just go through on penalties. Mm, like mm -hmm. uh, They didn't beat Manchester City, per mm -hmm. se. We got a few more super chats. What are we saying here? What do we got? Uh, what are we seeing? What do we have? We have Alan Soltero, Soltero. Soltero, your cousin once again. My boy, Alan. Ten bucks says, Holland is not defending his case of going MIA in important matches. Alan Madrid. 
I mean, you're talking to the number one Holland hate watcher as of now, bro. I was watching him this whole match, and once again, tough to see him make an impact. Almost hit the he hit the post though. He hit the post on one. It was a good header. It was a good header. But uh, after a while, he was kind of invisible once again. So yeah, I agree with you a little bit, man. He's uh he's not helping his case by another performance that is of that level. Yeah, it also is interesting though because unlike last year, Pep Guardiola's Manchester City is way less likely to send the ball into the box. They used to cross a lot more often. Now they've gone back to their traditional ways of trying to open up defenses with the ball on the ground. And that's never going to help Erling Holland. And also another thing, when you have an elite defender like Antonio Rudiger, Holland's going to see even less of the ball. You add those two factors together, I think it makes sense that Holland goes, let's say, missing in these games. But I, I, don't, I don't know if I say that because of that, Holland's a bad player. I'm not going to go That's there yet. That's not where I'm going. I'm not That's going not there going. yet. Maybe no. another year of this, if Holland just cannot figure this out, then I'll start saying that. But, I mean, Holland still scores a lot oh, of yeah. goals. Yeah. He's still an incredible finisher. I need way more time to assess before I start saying Holland's a bad player. I don't think bad players where people are going just maybe just doesn't have that clutch gene in big moments. Important matches when he's game planned against. No, but it, that's it, when it shows. I, I, th I think it's tough though, considering the way City are playing right now. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. think they're they're definitely relying way more on Foden than they ever have before, which is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's working, but also Kevin De Bruyne. So, and uh, think about how they use Jack Grealish today. Grealish crossed it like one time. Yeah. How is Holland expected to find the ball if Manchester City's not really promoting his style of play? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um. What are we having here? We have some more super chats. Let's look at these super chats. What do we got? My goodness, you guys are so active. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Alfred Ferdinand says, do y'all think Pep's 2011 Barca would have broken Madrid's gridlock defense we saw today? That's a great word, gridlock defense, man, gridlock because they were defense. pinned into their spots. What do you think? Would prime Barca have been able to break it today? Absolutely. The, their, their flow was one of the best of all time. I mean, Xavi Iniesta first of all, orchestrating the midfield, but if they can't find anything centrally, you go out to Pedro or David Villa, and then you still have Lionel Messi to create even more havoc. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that team definitely would have broken any defense. Prime 2011 Barcelona was something else. And actually, I think today, we saw why Manchester City just aren't as effective offensively as they were last year with the absence of um, uh, Ilkay Gundogan. Ah, yeah. yeah. I think it really showed today because... Obviously, when he was there at Manchester City, his fluidity in the midfield was unstoppable. If you were a defense, you never quite knew where Gundogan was going to pop up. Could he pop up in the box? Was he going to probe in and around the box and send in really nice balls over the top? Or was he going to feed from a deep position? Gundogan was everywhere when he was at Manchester City. You don't have that anymore. Obviously, he's now at Barcelona, but no other midfielder for Manchester City has stepped up in that Gundogan role. So there's way less fluidity in the midfield, De Bruyne coming off of an injury, and I think Manchester City become way more predictable now yeah. offensively. Yeah, man. Prime Barca in this game would have been fucking incredible, man. I wish you could have seen it because this Real Madrid team is very, very good. But I do think they would have broke, they would have found a way to break it, man. Yeah. They really would because they love playing in those little gaps. Yeah. That tightness, they thrive in it. And it would have just been incredible to see. We have a few more super chats, but guys, please like the stream. Like the stream because we still have to talk about a potential bottle job and Arsenal losing to Bayern Munich. We're going to get to that very soon because I know there's Bayern Munich fans that are waiting for our thoughts, Arsenal fans as well, but we have a few more Super Chats before we get there. Angel Bautista sends us $5 that goes to maybe getting us better lighting, maybe getting us better jerseys, maybe to buying us a Real Madrid jersey perhaps because that's something we don't own actually. Yeah, true. Angel Bautista says, I don't understand why you went for Arsenal the past two seasons. We have seen in big games, they are cowards. They are an elite team until it matters. I mean, you're not wrong. That's a, not wrong. Uh, yeah, I can't disagree with that not, statement whatsoever. After today's result, he's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in the past, I, I thought there'd be that, ch that chance. I thought there'd be that opportunity for Arsenal to finally mature themselves in big matches. We're going to get to it. But mm -hmm. I think what we saw today really emphasizes what my boy just said. Yep. Mateo Pegasus, two bucks. Is there Premier League? <laughs> the, is the Premier League the Farmers <laughs> League? Fuck, man. <laughs> I mean, what we have uh, one La Liga team, two German teams, and one French team mm -hmm. in the semis. No English teams. That no is English stark, teams. man. That it really is, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Penalty shootout. It's, it's, it's a coin flip. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I, I will say the other two uh, Prem teams that were in the Champions League were absolute ass. Yeah, Manchester Newcastle United and terrible, Newcastle. And Manchester if you terrible. had a Liverpool this year, if you had fucking Tottenham, Aston Villa, I think there's a better likelihood that one of them make into the semifinals. It's one of the reasons why I don't really get into the conversation of like, oh, La Liga dominates or Serie A dominates based off of knockout round, round competitions mm-hmm. because you get results like these where no English teams in the semis. But I think we all know, we all see the quality that the Prem has. It's definitely not the Farmers League, but I'm, I'm down for the jokes. Santi, five bucks. Guardiola being stubborn and not making changes when needed cost him big time. Julian Alvarez is talent wasted. What do you think about the subs that Guardiola made today, bringing on Kovacic, John Stones, uh, and then Alvarez and it is, Doku? It is true, though, because we saw the impact that Jeremy Doku had. It was immediate, and it was incredibly impactful. The problem is, is that it was he, Doku only had like 15, 20 minutes to operate. Imagine if he had put him on at the 60th minute mark. Grealish, for as much on the ball as he was today and for as good as he was, he just wasn't quite doing it. He wasn't beating Dani Carvajal. Carvajal honestly won that battle today. I I think that was actually very clear. Doku should have came on earlier. You think about a guy like Alvarez. Obviously, Holland's not cutting it by the 60, 70 minute. Bring on Julian Alvarez. Why wait until extra time? I agree with this. Guardiola was a bit stubborn today to make both the Doku and Alvarez changes. Yeah, some people said that Guardiola's worst enemy is himself because sometimes he overthinks situations right. or just doesn't prioritize certain players and doesn't, you know, is a little stubborn. He is a little stubborn at times, man. I think that showed today as well, man. Uh, and those Real Madrid subs were actually really surprising with like Modric, Lucas Vasquez having great penalties, bro, in yeah. the shootout outside of Modric. My fault. I forgot Modric misses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. M- Modric misses. But Vasquez, I thought, stepped up big time and had a beautiful penalty. Let's look at the chat now because we've been uh, prioritizing super chats. But finally, let's get to just the chats that we have here. What do we see? What are you guys saying? Because I'm seeing so many comments. Zaid Iqbal says, Bernardo was a star until that penalty. And congratulations to Madrid for the UCL <laughs> trophy. <laughs> That is kind of how I'm feeling, man. That's how I'm feeling personally. I think now with this victory, the momentum that it's going to give Real Madrid fans and the team itself is going to be huge. If there was only away goals rule, man, City would have gone through, says Aqua Edits. Oh, technically true, but I'm cool with it. You got to win it outright. I'm actually very anti-away goal. So uh, if anything, I'd I'd rather Madrid go through than City win on away goals. Yeah, yeah. Samyam Payukerel says, y'all are just sorry. Just admit that Madrid is the GOAT. I think we've done that so many times on this pod, bro. It we've sucks because it. it does sound like we're salty, but I mean, I, I still I still stand by the point. I think City were the better team, yeah. but Madrid just, my goodness, they dug deep and they got rewarded for that. Yeah. I'm not saying they didn't. I, I think didn't if, if you're a Madrid it. fan and you're not giving Manchester City credit for what they did, then you're you're greedy. I think yeah. you need to look yourself in the mirror and realize that what you saw, what we saw today was Real Madrid actually got outclassed. It was just a matter of margins, and they came through because of that grit and that heritage that they have, which no other team has, because Real Madrid is the GOAT in this tournament. Yeah, and you think about Vinicius. He got completely pocketed by Walker. Walker did not lose a single one-on-one battle against Vinicius Jr., That's insane. No other defender can do that, but that happened today. Vinicius almost always has his way, but not not today. And the th- honestly, same thing with Rodrigo and Bellingham was very shaky for most of the match today. Mm-hmm. They just it was very hard for them to build up plays against this Manchester City pressure. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep looking at this chat. What are we seeing? City dominated football is cruel, says Simeon Leo. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's how I'm taking this. Football yeah. is cruel, but that's why I watch it, bro. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> I'm okay with Madrid winning yeah. because you can win with defensive shape. Atleti did it for over a decade, and they just hit on the break. Madrid basically emulated that today and because of that just like at Leti back in 2016 2014 Madrid find themselves in a semi-final it's, it's the beauty of football because you don't earn or you you don't deserve it just based off of offense you have to earn it in your own way and today it was defensively for Real Madrid yeah man that that really was one of the best defensive performances I've seen from Real Madrid in like recent memory man yeah. that was a really good performance feel bad for Kevin De Bruyne he was amazing uh Madrid and Bayern just the bigger teams with an aura no chance to City and Arsenal, they will never have that big team aura. You could go into the aura debate because the teams with that aura were the ones that went through. So it is there for you. Alex Guerrero says City dominated, but this Madrid team has been such a good defensive team this season. They have. Um, so that's that showed itself today. 
Uh, Adhiat, man, these names, I'm sorry. Adhitya Vasudevan says, if Liverpool was in the competition, how do you think they'd be doing at this stage considering they lost 3-0 at home? I think a big part of why they lost 3-0 to Atalanta was because they underestimated their opponent. Yeah. I don't think they would have done that in the Champions League. I think it's that simple. If Liverpool buckles up and plays up to their level, they're a top four team in the world, in my opinion. So I just think it's tough to predict how they would have done in the Champions League. I do think they would have gone far, though. Um, unpopular opinion, but Kyle Walker has been the best defender in the world for the past year. I'm so willing to entertain that, yeah, man. Me too. I really am. Because in these big matches, and even at the World Cup, he just, man, he shows up up for his squad yeah. just his energy his inspiration and his tactical ability is so good bro he is so good man and i really love watching kyle walker I, I, dude 100 percent agree the confidence i have in walker to win his one-on-one -on -one duels on the wing is unparalleled i don't ever see him losing a foot race i just don't and i don't really have that confidence in most defenders out there but i do in kyle walker yeah yeah uh, it's kind of crazy though to see him um uh, be somewhat at fault in the first goal where he uh, kept the players onside. He was the last player, the last defender defending the line, and then he missed when he swung at the ball. Rodrigo lands at his feet. Really nice shot. Saved by Ederson. Would have been a crazy save, but then he gets the rebound. So I want to give a shout-out to Rodrigo for actually scoring the only uh, Real Madrid goal in this match. Big moment for him. I saw a really good comment here. We have Eduardo Vaz with a $5 super chat. Thank you, bro. Do you guys still believe Holland versus Mbappe is still a debate after Holland's lack of performance in big moments while Mbappe is clinical in front of goal? I mean, this is a question directly to me because I've been I've been addressing this, this whole Champions League knockout stage run. I think it's showing itself, the levels between Mbappe and Holland when we talk about which player is worse when they're not showing their full talents on the pitch. I think it's clear that Holland has less of an impact when he's when he's off Whereas Mbappe, when he's off. Mbappe, people were criticizing in that first match against Barcelona that he wasn't his best self. And he wasn't. But even then, he had three players on him every time he dribbled. Even then, he basically got the assist against Dembele. Holland did nothing. He did nothing, in my opinion. It was ghosted in these two big matches outside of hitting the post one time. I think the difference is so clear. And I'd love to know in the chat, what do you guys think? Holland or Mbappe? Let's do a poll right here. Holland or Mbappe after these quarterfinal matchups? What do you guys think? Who do you guys think is the better player? Holland with... Uh, uh, do uh, <laughs> Holland, H-A-A, -A, two A's. But I actually agree with Matt FSN here. I, I think it's more so you can't really have this debate anymore because Holland is a victim of Pep's tactics. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at because if Holland was, for example, on this Borussia Dortmund side, he'd be way more active in the Champions League. He'd be uh, involved so much more than he is with this Manchester City side because the way that Manchester City approached the game now is not to give it to Holland. So how how do you expect Holland to get into the game if that's simply if he's simply not being emphasized? Yeah, I think my argument goes beyond that. Though I'm saying Holland at his best still isn't what Mbappe at his best is. But, Even with the tactics behind them. But they're completely different players. Holland is a striker striker, mm -hmm. whereas Mbappe's stylistic. No, I agree. I agree. That's why the debate is kind of dumb. But like I said, we're going to have this podcast for a long time. People are going to ask us this question. Mm -hmm. That's why I always go with Mbappe. Although the ba the core foundation behind the argument is, is flawed because they're just different players. But yeah, the same could have been said for Ronaldo and Messi. Kind of. Because Ronaldo, for a lot of his career, was a winger. And he was also a ball-oriented type of player. So it made sense to compare him to Messi because they both were very comfortable on the ball. Whereas Holland is a number nine and Mbappe is a winger. I think it's like comparing Lewandowski to, you know, like Vinicius. You don't mm -hmm. do that comparison. Mm -hmm. That's so right. I think, honestly, the debate should stop is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. We have Mbappe at 90%, Holland at 10. I think I could carry Madrid to the final. I play left on the bench. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. uh, Holland is a true striker with nothing else. He has no dribbling or passing. Absolutely. Um, you can't compare them. One is a winger, the other is a striker. Yeah, I do think exactly it's that simple. What I'm saying. I do think it's that simple. Uh, do these results make all your predictions wrong? It made two of them wrong, I believe. Two of them. Santi says, as a Liverpool fan, I just hope City playing 120 minutes and losing will help them drop points in the league. Honestly, yeah. Damn, man, damn. <laughs> There's a big chance, but Liverpool still have a big game tomorrow yeah, as well, so yeah. let's not forget about that. Yeah, and they pull off a comeback, and that will be, I'll be, you'll be hearing from me. <laughs> that would be you'll crazy, be hearing from me. If, if they pull off a comeback, I, 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 they're going to hear from me. Matt FSN says Mbappe is a complete player overall. 
and I use Cotillan says Mbappe to Real Madrid dead emoji. I mean, that's kind of how I'm feeling here too. That's kind of why I was hoping Manchester City would go through because Mbappe with Real Madrid, I mean, if that actually does happen, if they end up getting this incredible player, I think it's going to be incredibly hard for any team to match Real Madrid's offensive level. And that's kind of why I wanted Manchester City to take advantage mm -hmm. of this uh, weaker Real Madrid side because I do think we're going to see an even stronger version of themselves next year. What's crazy is that I'd say the favorites now to get to the final is PSG and Mbappe and Madrid. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance that right before Mbappe goes to Real Madrid in the summer that he actually plays them for the fucking Champions yeah. League final. Yeah. And, that and, would be nuts. And man. I want that. I want that. Yeah. I, that's, the, that's the final I'm rooting for. They asked him uh, yesterday if winning the Champions League with PSG would change his decision at all. He said no. Yeah. Yeah, he said no. He's I been think. there so yeah. long. He's done everything that he possibly could for them. He's won damn near every, one, every League One title. He's been their top goal scorer every single season. He's trying to get them to another Champions League final. Like, what more could you ask of him? He's in his prime, and who doesn't want to go to Real Madrid in their prime when they're one of the best in Europe? I, I will just say, though, if this Manchester City team couldn't take out Real Madrid, you're telling me that in a final PSG, this PSG side is going to be the one that trumps Real Madrid solely due to Kylian Mbappe. Uh, I think it'd be the one of the greatest res like achievements in somebody's career if Mbappe is able to trump Real Madrid in a final. Mm. I don't think it'll happen, though. Yeah. I really don't, man. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I agree because I trust PSG's offense, and honestly, I think they could do a, a bit more damage than City were able to do today. But I just don't trust PSG's defense. Not against Bellingham, Rodrigo, Vinicius. I really don't. I don't think PSG have a guy like Kyle Walker to be able to shut down one of those wingers. And if you can't shut them down, they are going to get goals against you. So ultimately, if it becomes a shootout, I, I pick Madrid over PSG. Yeah, that's why I'm feeling too. The one Salvadorian says uh, the, that El Salvador kick is fire. And El Salvadorian is in the chat, bro. Hell yeah, brother. Shout out El Salvador real What has quick. happened to this fucking chat, kid, man? Baby. What happened to our live streams, man? <laughs> God damn, no, I'm playing. Shout out to you, bro. And yes, we have a we have a Salvadorian representative here in Saltero wearing a beautiful, beautiful jersey. Abraham, since it's 10 bucks, I might actually have to buy a Real Madrid jersey then. These Super Chats are funding our Real Madrid jersey. Didn't see the live video yesterday on Atleti and Dorman until last night, but Saltero's face yesterday <laughs> during the live looked like Reynoso's face on the live video after the Mexico versus USA yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, bro. Now I know how you felt, man. <laughs> now I know how you felt. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts, man. That's, That's crazy. Facts. Josue Cinto says Gundogan, his loss in Barcelona. Oh, Gundogan has lost in the Barcelona, in Barcelona, and former. Gundogan has lost. How do I read this, bro? <laughs> I don't know, I, honestly, but Gun either way. Gondugan, by the way. I wonder if it's basically what I'm saying. Like, Gundogan lost with Barcelona, and also Manchester City lost too. So, in a way, Gundogan lost twice. Twice, maybe right. something like that. Right, but yeah, he lost twice. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> okay, uh, read a few more chats and then we're gonna get into the uh, Arsenal game. Rudra says, Holland's prime ended before GTA 6. <laughs> God damn. I mean, low key, if Holland's prime was like just the last two years and it ended last yes. year, that's nuts, yes. bro. That's uh, nuts. I don't even want to consider that. I'm not uh, considering it yet. Not yet. Jesse Ayala says, Soltero looks like a new person. Bro did not want to stream yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was tough, man. I'm going to be completely honest. Today was fun, though. Two insanely close games. Yeah. Uh, Alstan says, I hope all the puns still make Madrid underdogs and makes Champions League sweeter. I was saying about that, bro, from a Madrid perspective, being called an underdog and winning a knockout game in the Champions League must be like a turn on. Because they, the way they get to just flaunt their history, yeah, flaunt yeah, their heritage, yeah. and flaunt their victory. Like, that's why this chat is so active. Moment. Like, yeah. I wish I was a Madrid fan. I honestly do. Because these moments must be so nice. Yeah. We have a super chat from Angel Bautista. He says, you are also forgetting the manager of PSG. He is a winner. Won the trouble before. Perfect man for the job. Do you know his name, man? You're not gonna men you're not gonna mention the PSG manager's name, my friend? I just think PSG. Luis Enrique. I, I just think PSG uh, lost that tie against Barcelona. But the red card changed everything. Yeah. Once so, again, the better team did not go through in that I, one. I think yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think so. As salty as it sounds, I don't think PSG should be in the semis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if he did it, I mean, it would be the guy to do it. Luis Enrique, a proven winner. Uh, okay. I think it's time that we flip on over to Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. We've got all the Real Madrid talk out of the way. Guys, you celebrate your victory. But now... 
Even if you're a Madrid fan, I want to hear the comments. I want to hear the banter. I want to hear the jokes on this Arsenal versus Manchester. Sorry. Arsenal versus Bayern Munich matchup, and more specifically, game analysis, because we were kind of watching it on and off. Yeah, We weren't as keyed in as we were with that Real Madrid uh, uh, Man City match, but we saw the important moments. Yeah. And for the most part, man, I left disappointed seeing that Arsenal wasn't able to truly generate any dangerous opportunities, at least not consistently, to the point where Rafael Guerrero sends in the beautiful cross in, Kimmich finds it at the end, and by the 70th minute, they're leading 1-0, and they look in full control. Yeah. Bayern Munich qualifies, proving our prediction wrong, but then also shutting down the last remaining English team in this tournament in Arsenal. Yeah, they completely stopped Arsenal from mounting any sort of comeback. Once they got that go-ahead goal, I thought Arsenal was going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at Bayern Munich, and Arteta tried. You know, He immediately brought on Gabriel Jesus, Leandro Trossard, taking off Jorginho, and keeping on Kai Havertz and Martin Odegaard. So he threw everything at Bayern. But what's crazy is that even with those offensive additions, Bayern Munich looked even more so in control. And I think that goes back to what Bautista's comment says. Arsenal, at the end of the day, still is a small club. And when they face against greatness, when they're on the road in the Allianz Arena, I just don't think they can win. And they have proven over the last two years, for as good as they have been offensively, they do go ghost in big games. They really do. And I think that's what happened today. They had a great first half. I thought it was very end-to-end. -end. Neither team could craft any sort of chance. I thought it was perfectly poised for the second half to come. But Bayern Munich took over in the second half. And Arsenal had no response. They actually got weaker. Once they went down, it was over. The class, the legacy of Bayern Munich completely took over. And Arsenal was just left with nothing at the end of it, man. So, yeah, I'm very disappointed with Arsenal. But all things considered, this is how Arsenal perform in very, very big matches. If Essentially, if they do not score by the 45th minute, they don't score for the rest of the second half. Yeah, you compared Arsenal's uh, playing style as one of the sexiest in world football. And I love that comment because when they're on it, when they're flowing, it really is some of the most beautiful stuff you've ever seen. And just like a beautiful woman, man, I was charmed. Mm -hmm. I was uh, lured in. I was tempted by that sexiness, by that attractiveness. But Who was you, it, know, you, what, know? What, you know what's the one thing that could stop that, that, that connection from happening is a disruptor. A person that comes in doesn't even let that girl put on her makeup. Uh, and that's what Byron did in this weird analogy I'm making. <laughs> they didn't let Arsenal even get ready. They didn't even put that makeup. They were still putting it on their outfit, bro, because they played some ugly football today. And every time I would look at the screen, Arsenal would constantly get the ball taken from them. Bayern Munich just kept intercepting all these balls. They kept just disrupting their play. Saka didn't look impactful. Martin Nelly didn't no, look impactful either. No. Gabriel Jesus came on, didn't do much. The only guy I really saw with any grit or any heart was uh, Martin Odegaard, who seems to be the one guy on this team that, no matter the result, no matter the context of the game, gives his absolute yeah. best, his absolute all. And I do feel that from his perspective, he must feel a little let down now, two years in a row from his teammates who either get in their head or just don't I don't know what happens man but that that little club that small club mentality yeah. I think ultimately comes at play for a lot of these guys man and it's truly disappointing because at some point they either overcome that or they just succumb to it yeah. and I'm scared that it might be the latter yeah that's the thing and it goes back to why I think we both predicted that Arsenal would edge Bayern Munich in this tie is because we I thought we both had them maturing this tournament this time around instead of last year going quiet come march april time frame instead rising to the occasion and defeating all of those demons that have been at arsenal football club for the last 10 years i thought this was finally going to end it against a very inconsistent bayern munich but it just wasn't so that's the problem man is that this was their chance dude this was their the chance. worst bayern team in the last 10 years versus the best arsenal team in the in the last 10 years yeah. that's how simple this was Playing at such a high level in the prem, this really is. I think it. I think it. It flirts with the bottle job tagline because they had it, man. They really did have the opportunity to take advantage of a opportunity that was very favorable and that was presented to them, and, and they just fell short, man. They really did. Yeah, and I, I do want to just add at the end of all this. I mean, they only lost by one goal. It's not like Bayern Munich killed them, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why, if you're a Bayern Munich fan, yes, you can celebrate this, but. You're going to have to play twice as good if you want to beat Real Madrid. 
Like, if you play the way you did against Arsenal, yeah, you might get a couple goals against Real, but you're going to get cooked. And that's why I'm ultimately not completely down if I'm supporting Arsenal here because they did try. It's just that their best ultimately isn't good enough. And I think that's where you can be disappointed and frustrated as an Arsenal fan. But I don't think you can get too over your head if you're a Bayern Munich fan because ultimately you basically barely beat this Arsenal side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. What do we have here in the chat? Zaid Igbaz says uh, uh, something related to City. Let's see. Matt Universe. Bro, when Thomas Muller makes a video on your club, you're basically finished. Um, the fourth four says the win wasn't decisive. Um, Angel Mirens Mijares says Bayern needs a reality check that Tuchel is driving the bus still. Uh, Will Harkin, does the Pren give these teams too much credit for what they're actually worth? If you're looking for soccer, he is in Masrawi's pockets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Masrawi had a really good game today. Uh, Chapa says, I'm glad Madrid won. Y'all were hating because Atletico was ass and lost in Barca too. Hus Jaber says, Arsenal is the girl you meet at the club and then the lights turn on. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm that, trying that, to say. That's good. Yeah. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Fernando Cruz says, Odegaard should go back to Real Madrid. That'd be oh. lit. Oh, that'd be amazing, <laughs> man. That'd be amazing. Uh, great. That's a great idea, man. I wish we could just see that. Uh, Madrid won by the barest of margins. Tough luck city. Byron ain't being real. No way. Uh, Jose nah. Cinto says, Josue Cinto says, as a city and Barca fan, I'd rather Madrid win uh, the UCL instead of Paris. I see Madrid winning the Champions League. Talk about Europa League. He says, as a city and Barca fan, first and foremost. Right, uh, which one are you, my friend? I need you to pick one. I need you to pick one. And then if you're a Barca fan, why would you root for Madrid ever? Right? That's why I'm a little confused here. Why wouldn't you root for Paris Saint-Germain is my only question. Uh, the best teams ended up as victors. These two matches showed which teams had the best blend of experience, skill, and strength to pull through, demonstrating which should and would go through. Uh, I think for the Bayern Arsenal game, yes, I wouldn't say that for a Real Madrid match personally. Yeah. The analogy of Arsenal being a woman and then Saltero talking about Arsenal edging Bayern, bro, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> Welcome to the give and go. Welcome to the fucking show, man. Welcome to the fucking show. Uh, Ijaz Dev says Tuchel is underrated manager. Everyone says Chelsea 21 Champions League was luck, but it ain't. Tuchel might just be experiencing these uh, big matches. Is that a narrative that's actually happening, bro? <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I need to see Bayern in the final. Yeah. If Bayern beat Real Madrid, then I think that's a definite conversation that needs to be had about Thomas Tuchel. Yeah. But because Madrid's going to be a hell of a test for Bayern. Yeah. Uh, that Real Madrid, Bayern Munich semifinal, and then PSG Dortmund final chat. What is the final going to look like? Tell us right now. What does the final look like? No poll. Just what does the final look like? Is it going to be PSG Man City? Uh, Man City. PSG Madrid. Is it going to be Dortmund Bayern Munich? Is it going to be Dortmund Madrid? That'd be a weird ass final. That would be nuts. Yeah, that'd be nuts. That'd be nuts. What's it going to be, guys? What's it going to be? Tell us. Chivas versus PSG says ASZ. <laughs> uh, Bayern versus PSG. Real versus PSG. Man, yeah, a lot of PSG Madrid is kind of how I'm feeling about it too. That definitely has to be the favored matchup in terms of just odds, Madrid yeah. PSG. But at this point, I think anything can happen truly. I truly do love the semifinal stage. I said it yesterday, but I'll say it again today. The semifinal of any knockout tournament in Europe is my absolute favorite because finals don't tend to live up to the either atmosphere or the ambience of not playing at home. You end up playing in a neutral stadium. You end up playing in a predetermined stadium semifinals where you get to play home in a way in front of your fans and in front of the opposing team fans as well so you know Real Madrid going to the Allianz Arena I think that's already a really historic matchup that we've seen time and time again Bayern and Real Madrid I'm excited to see that and then Dortmund playing in France recreating the uh, group stage yeah. matchup that we already saw earlier on this year Pretty man cool. that's going to be really cool to see with a lot bigger stakes at hand. I love the semifinal stage of the UEFA Champions League, and I can't believe that it's starting off with a incredible quarterfinal matchups that we just saw. Yeah, I'm really excited for the semifinals, bro. Madrid, 
Bayern, PSG, Dortmund. I mean, there's so many storylines. Can Mbappe get to the final, win the first Champions League for PSG after spending billions? Dortmund, can they get back to a final? Honestly, after having been to it since 2013, a repeat for them, a 10-year, 11-year break, not bad. Mm -hmm. Like, for them to have this opportunity, and considering the amount of players that they've sold over these last 11 years... For them to get themselves an opportunity to be in a final, I think is huge for this club. It, it's fantastic for them. And they'll have a decent chance against PSG. For Madrid, it's about continuing the legacy. And for Bayern, it's about returning to the legacy yeah. that they've had over the last decade. Yeah, I want you to, for this next week, take some time to really consider these matchups. Think about where you're going with it because we will release a semifinal Champions League preview video. Yeah. So, you know, keep it, keep thinking about it. Let it simmer. I know that we, we just <laughs> saw the results, but let's think about it for a little bit. But... I do think these matchups are going to be really, really fun. Let's read a few chats here. What else do we have? Jeff Sedano says, I'll cream for Dortmund versus Bayern Munich. I think our fan base is starting to understand this. It would be cool, though. Der <laughs> 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 no, Der Klassiker in the final, once again, would be awesome. Yeah. Because the idea that Dortmund could get revenge. And what's crazy is that considering Bayern this year, it'd just be another Bundesliga tie. I, honestly, Dortmund would have a really good chance to win it this year if they get Dorm, uh, Bayern in the nuts, final. Man. That'd be nuts it'd be if the this perfect was how they lifted their, their Champions League trophy. Yeah. Be like, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Josue Cinto says, I'm Barca because I asked him earlier if he was Barca or uh, Manchester City. So he's Barca. He's a Barca fan. But Madrid today, performance, the performance today deserves respect. Bro. <laughs> Atletico played the same way <laughs> during 2014 to 20 fucking 24. And I have never once yeah. heard, oh, I'm really glad Atletico defended they today. They deserve respect. I can't, I've never heard that sentence. Yeah. And Madrid played the same fucking way. And, and, all, rivals. Of us, and all of a sudden, Madrid masterclass. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, Let it out. he's a genius. Let it out, bro. All Let of out. a sudden, Rudiger's the best defender yeah. in the world. Yep. Madrid's the best club in the world. Like <sighs> The amount of injuries I saw from uh, Real Madrid today. It's the same shit that Atletico did. The it's what the people, same people shit, call bro. shit houseery combined with incredible defensive tactics. Yeah. People hated Atletico for that. Yeah. And Real Madrid did do that today. Did let's, that let's, today. let's not lie. They did do that today and it worked out for them. But we respect it because we've always respected Atletico. Uh, that's always been a big part of a, why you love that team. But we are seeing a lot of people finally give that respect, man. Yeah. Hey, bro, and don't rile yourself up too much, man. Yeah. It's all right. You're uh, good. I'm just saying, man. You're people, good, bro. Uh, You're good. Jude Bellingham, bro. That dude was... All over the pitch today, man. He's honestly one of the worst <sighs> games I've seen Bellingham in a Madrid shirt. He just wasn't really active offensively at the very least. Well, he had the crazy touch and the build to the goal. It was right? a good touch. That was a good touch. But, yeah, I, but, I, but that's what I'm saying. Beyond the 20 minute mark, Madrid was oh, not there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I, I mean, he was all over the pitch. Like, literally, he kept falling like in different <laughs> areas of the pitch and just wasting time. But hey, Real Madrid wins. Due to lift the trophy at Wembley. That'd be crazy. Saltero tight, his team in the mud, says Rodrigo Idarraga. Uh, Ederson is a madman, coming on, taking a pen. Yeah, that, that's crazy that that happened, that Ederson took a penalty in like uh, that, that high stakes of a moment. It was a hell of a pen, too. Like, needing a goal to keep the game alive, and he put it away beautifully, Ederson, baby. Yeah. Isn't Champions League getting boring? If Madrid wins this year, they'll have six in the last 10 years. UEFA needs to change something. Also, when are the deep dives coming in for the Euros? So first off, the Champions League comment. Yes. I mean, that's why we have more tournaments, my friends. That's why we have the Europa League if you're tired of, uh, you know, Real Madrid winning everything. That's why you have the Europa Conference League, which was actually very entertaining last year. There's many more tournaments you can uh, shift your eyes to if you want to get that fixed because I understand where you're coming from. The Euros, that's coming uh, probably next month. Probably next month, we're going to go all in on Copa America and Euro previews. Yeah, stay tuned for that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to go incredibly deep in our dives for both the euros and the copa america it's going to be an incredibly fun summer but just to kind of comment on the champions league i think it's always been predictable mm -hmm. right you if you really think about it money dictates dictates everything and it even dictates football right and so if madrid one of the biggest clubs in the world go against a Leipzig, you know, go against other smaller teams. I mean, they're, they're always going to be favored to win. And the legacy that they've built, that's, the, that's what Manchester City have to go against because City don't have that legacy. So I think the predictability is something that just is. 
and it's just a part of the Champions League. But it's why the Europa League and the Conference League exists. So you can see different variations. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It is kind of like that. I mean, truly, if you look at it, there only have been like five different winners in the past 10 years. Yeah. Real Madrid, Liverpool, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, and Manchester City, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it is predictable in that sense. But there's yeah. so many more tournaments that you can watch if you want to get that fix. Yeah. We have a super chat from... Fernando Cruz. It has six likes already, too. I will be a Barca fan if Rafa Marquez becomes the head coach. How do you think he will do? Dude, I'm seeing reports. He's being favored as a next man up once Xavi leaves that position. From a Mexican perspective, this might be the most positive thing happening mm. for the Mexican just person. Not even national team. For like a Me- for Mexicans all around, if we had a Mexican, Rafa Marquez specifically, El Kaiser, guiding Barcelona, man. That'd be a crazy journey to watch. I have no idea how you will do personally because I just don't watch his coaching style at the youth level for Barcelona. But I do know that he is in the he's in the running, and I know that his footballing IQ is so high, and he was a big reason for why Mexico was so great for 20 years when we had him. So I don't doubt that he'd be a great coach, um, and I would hope that he'd be a great coach. But I really don't know specifically, you know, what his uh, strengths and weaknesses are coaching wise. But there's also rumors saying that Xavi might reverse his decision to leave. And I could definitely see that happening, considering that Barcelona are in the best form of their of their club over the last five years. So you might be inclined to actually keep Xavi Hernandez as coach, especially considering that everyone actually has chemistry right now in Barcelona. Why would you want to lose that? I yeah. just think I think it there's a good shot for Xavi to stay. I mean, that's like a coaching vasectomy, man. You can't like, yeah, you can reverse it, but like, what's the point of it then? What was the point of saying that he wouldn't do it, that he wouldn't, that he, you know, I thought that was already going to be, I thought that was already a predetermined thing that he agreed to do and to stick by your guns and say, you know what, I'm out. But then to return, I just, I don't know. I, I would look back on his tenure like, why did that moment even happen? Why was that even a thing? That's, That's frustrating true. that your yeah. coach basically gave up for a while and then was like, you know what? I'll come back. I'm ready for a change at Barcelona personally because Xavi, the reports I saw from him yesterday, the interviews I saw where he was dying on the hill that Araujo got robbed and that it was not a red card. I know he's trying to back his team, but bro, come on, man. Klopp was, does that too, though. There's, not there's, to that extent. No, though. he does. Klopp's he gets salty, sore, though. Klopp's a sore loser. Yeah, yeah. I think so is Xavi. Yeah, yeah. But I think Xavi's type of sore losing is different from Klopp's. I think Klopp's, <sighs> I you can tell know. that there's an element of like emotion behind it. I think Xavi truly believes that it was not a red card. I think Klopp gets I'm okay emotional. With, I'm okay with that. Mm. I'm okay with that as a coach. Mm. All right. Well, they're both leaving, uh, hopefully, this offseason. <laughs> <laughs> Hus Jaber says, get your money up, not your funny up. So, in regards to, I don't know. In regards to, I don't know. I don't know. I'll take money, though, instead of funny. <laughs> <laughs> get your money up, not your funny up. Saltero, you need to apologize, boy. Rafa should coach the national hell, uh, team. Rafa is, I think, second or third place with Barca B team, says Jeff. We have a $5 super chat from El Rey Vélez. I always hope that it's El Rey Noso Vélez. But he says, as a Barca fan, I would love Rafa Marquez as a coach. And the Rey in my name is not for Reynoso, it's for Reyes. He, he anticipated I was going to say that. That's fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy. Reyes. Okay. Well, that's, a, that's one of the lesser Rey last names, I'll say. But hey, it's fine. I respect it. Do you think Brahim joining Morocco was the right call? Absolutely. I can't believe that one of Spain's finest teams, Real Madrid, had to sub on a Moroccan to save them because I was thinking like, bro, this should be the this should be like Spain's next golden boy. This should be Spain's attacking midfielder for the next five years. But instead, he's Morocco's. And congratulations to y'all because he's going to be great for y'all. Yeah, it's a win for Brian Diaz's national career and a huge win for Morocco. It's a huge loss for the Spanish Federation, though, who has been so weird over the last couple of years, not ever calling up Iñaki Williams, which is insane to think about considering all that he's done for Athletic. And to not call Brian Diaz for what he's done for Real Madrid, being a perfect utility type of player, giving everything that he can when Bellingham's Bellingham's injured or Rodrigo's out or... Vinicius Jr. is out. It's Brian Diaz who has come on, and it's just a weird decision for Spain to not call him up, but a huge win for Morocco. Yeah, huge win for Morocco, man. Angel Mirantz Mijar sends us two bucks. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much. Thank and you, hey, man. your profile picture looks sweet, man. Is that, is that your girlfriend in that? That's a beautiful <laughs> photo. That really is a beautiful photo. Hus Jaber responded. He says, in regards to teams whining about club spending, get your money up, not your funny up. I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, like yeah. you want to you want to keep up. You got to get your funds up, bro. Absolutely, you got to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th- there's nothing you can do to stop it. So if you lose against 
a team that has more money than you, then that's just the reality of mm-hmm. things. You can't you can't beat that. Mm-hmm. You and can I, try. I think there's still an element of like, yeah, if you get your money up, you are likely to succeed. But you see, you have teams like Chelsea getting their money up and their funny up at the same time <laughs> because they've been so clumsy this whole year. Roger Rivera says, apology letter done, but hopefully Madrid lose. So in regards to my dormant apology letter, I'm planning it out. I'm scoping it out. I uh, uploaded the TikTok. I uploaded the reel. I uploaded the live stream last night. Yeah. I'm going to start preparing to write my letter and to get it all ready. So, yes, that is coming soon. Uh, as for any apology letter today, we're not doing that. We agreed beforehand. We spoke about in the preview predictions video that this does not deserve an apology letter. All, you, all it deserves is us giving credit to Real Madrid and congratulations because historic result here. Once again, showing off that footballing heritage. Indeed. Gilberto Godinez. That's a nice name, man. The alliteration there is beautiful. Gilberto Godinez. Mi nombre es Gilberto Godinez, man. What a name. <laughs> With Man City out of the Champions League, does that give them the focus for the Premier League? Oh, definitely. And the fact that they just got the lead this past week and might honestly put this in the back for them to win their fourth Premier League title. Mm. I think you could definitely consider that. But either way, it's so tight. There's still a lot of football left to be played. The Premier League title race is going to be must-watch football no matter what. Mm-hmm. It's going to be insane to see. Yeah, I do wish that, you know, Premier League teams would become inspired from seeing Real Madrid's performance. Real Madrid showed today that you don't even need like crazy offensive talent to beat Ma- Manchester City or get a result. Bunker in and have an organized defensive shape, mm-hmm. and you might walk away from the Etihad with a point. They should follow that. As a Liverpool fan, I hope that teams would see that and inspire themselves instead of just bending over and letting Manchester City annihilate them. Damn, man, the chat is looking beautiful right now. Uh, Roger Rivera, hey Salter, would you take Alex Joao Felix back at Atletico? No, simply because he left the team knowing that he just didn't want to be a part of it. it. It's not like it was a money thing. It's not like we were offloading him to try and get another player. We let him go because he did not want to be there. So I don't want a player who doesn't want to be a part of Simeone's system. All respect to him. He'll be happier at a different club, whether it's Barcelona or whether it's somewhere else. I would not take Joao Felix back at it. I Atletico. wouldn't either if yeah. I was y'all, man. That, 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 that train has moved on. Yeah, yeah you're it's done. done. Yassine Najad, I like this message. He says, Thierry Henry, Jamie Carragher, Michael Richards all predicted that Madrid would lose. That goes to show you the unpredictability of the Champions League. Absolutely. <laughs> and that that's the beauty of knockout stage football is that if you can just get your tactics right, you'll give yourself a really good chance, even if the other team plays, quote unquote, better football. Yeah, I, I think on a match to match basis or knockout basis, the, the results can be tough to predict. But overall, it's usually like a group of six teams that win the tournament. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Um, it's dangerous for other European countries. How many German players getting in form at Bayern, Bayer Stuttgart? Uh, Dortmund and Re- and Real or I don't want really to get that message. Uh, do you think Chelsea, who is flown with confidence, can beat Manchester City, who are shattered right now? Is that happening this weekend? Is Chelsea Man City this week? Oh, it's I the the, so. the the perhaps it's going to be the uh, FA Cup final. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm not sure when they face. Yeah, Chelsea versus Manchester City this Saturday. Man City just played 120 minutes of football. Chelsea just scored six on Everton, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cole Palmer playing some. No, that'll be a fun game. I mean, if you saw Crystal Palace and Aston Villa play mm-hmm. against Liverpool and Arsenal, respectively, you know that there's always offensive class in the Premier League that can beat any sort of defense. So if you have an informed Chelsea, they could score against Liverpool, Arsenal, and of course, they could score against Manchester City. Mm-hmm. So with a fatigued Man City, then yeah, if you're Liverpool, you're definitely hoping that that comes into play. I, I am absolutely <laughs> hoping that it does come into play, man. And I, more than anything, I want to see Cole Palmer go up against his old team, a man who has yeah. tied Holland on goal score this season, playing incredible football. And Chelsea does seem a little bit motivated right now. I think they're on a winning streak at this moment, their longest winning streak so far this season, like seven games against pretty weak teams, but still yeah. nonetheless, they've mm-hmm. gotten some momentum. Uh, I think uh, I think they could really play up to Manchester City's level for 90 minutes. Yeah, that'll be a really fun game. Also, El Clásico, Madrid against Barcelona, which is huge. Madrid playing 120 minutes. Barcelona not. Maybe they're trying to vindicate the robbery, if you will, uh, that they had against PSG. That'll be really interesting because if Barcelona can get the result against 
Madrid and El Clásico, they'll cut the deficit to five points, which still is a margin, but it'll just make things a little bit more interesting to see out the rest of the season. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. And uh, we'll be crazy. We'll be Coachella. Because uh, <laughs> that's where you're going to be, man. That's where you're going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if all those games are happening. What else we got here? We got about four more minutes till we close shop up. We have Rodolfo Chavez saying that I missed the Madrid analysis you did. Go up to the very beginning and you'll hear us talk about Real Madrid. Said Iqbal sounds like a that sounds like a soccer player. Can City be coached? How to take a penalty by Ederson? What a penalty can Harry Kane curse be lifted? That is true. Uh, Kane is working towards lifting that curse, man. He's working the magic behind the scenes, hoping for that juju. They're in the semifinals now. I still think, though, that he's going to end the season trophy list, personally. I think so, too. Also, I think it's Zidane Iqbal is a, a Rocky footballer. Yeah. That's who I'm thinking <laughs> about, man. Zidane Iqbal. Uh, Cracker Slovenian. Have you guys talked about Bayern versus Arsenal? We did. I honestly think it was a Thomas Tuchel masterclass. Sure, the scoreline isn't huge, but it talks about how important this game was. I mean, this says a lot more about Bayern than it does about Arsenal because I thought Arsenal ultimately, in a way, choked this game away or... Uh, let that let the big game moment get to them but a big part of it was Tuchel's uh, elements the way he tacted the way he planned this game out strategized it and ultimately outclassed Arteta on the sideline who is probably going to end another season trophy list it's, man. it's really tough for Arsenal but I also don't want to downplay the fact that this second leg was played you know in Germany, right? And I do think that definitely helped Bayern take more control of the game, especially when Arsenal started to get desperate. It did not work in their favor, and Bayern got stronger based off of that desperation. I just don't know if Bayern would have been as in control in the same situation, second leg in London. I think it would have been a little bit different. Not saying that Arsenal would have won, but I just think the control that Bayern ended the game with, I think definitely was helped by the home atmosphere. Yeah, and I don't want to downplay these matches either because I think all four quarterfinal matches were like wars, man. Oh, they, they, were, were, they were all wars. so tied. Yeah. One, of the, one of the best, most competitive quarterfinal matchups probably in Champions League history. Yeah. All four of them were incredibly tight, so well contested. We saw some beautiful goals, very high scoring, a lot of drama, and it took a lot for the teams that went through to the semifinals to earn the right to get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So this was very well earned from all four teams, and they got to take that same energy now and do it all <sighs> over again for the semifinals. It's going yeah. to be really tough to do. I, I do think, oh man, I, I think the semifinal will be a little bit more... I don't want to say predictable, but probably not as as uh, chaotic as this quarterfinal uh, was because I, I really do think like the, the the way these four matches were set up, every team came out guns a blazing, yeah, bro. Like every team yeah. tried their absolute best. Atletico was up in the tie at one point, mm -hmm. man. Like even the weaker teams had their moments, whereas usually. And Champions League quarterfinals, you might have like a Benfica in there. You might have like a Porto. You might have a PSV get involved. And you just get an easy quarterfinal result. Yeah. So I don't want us to look back on these quarterfinal matches and be like, oh, Arsenal got knocked out in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Because looking at the context, this basically felt like, this almost felt like a semifinal at certain points, man. Yeah. Like the stakes were really yeah. that much higher. And I don't think it's comparable to other Champions League quarterfinals because what we saw this, these, this past week, I, I just think it was incredible football from everyone involved. Dude, so true because consider the fact that if Arsenal had drawn Atletico, Arsenal are going to the yep. semifinals. Yep. Like that was the importance of these matchups. It was perfectly drawn for every single team and their opponent. It just worked beautifully to have four insanely tight matches. But you're right. Usually in the past, there's always at least one matchup that would have been like mm -hmm. a Bayern Atletico or a PSG Dortmund, something that would be a little bit more straightforward. But no, the, the lineups were a matches made in heaven for this quarterfinals yes, this year. Yes, 100%. And then lastly, the last super chat we have here, Niraj Ramesh. Shilelar. What a name. Hey, do you think finals should be two legs as well? Oh, great question. I, I have to away. say no. Home and away final. I have to say no just because 
The World Cup final is one leg. You think about the most dramatic final in the world, if it's just one game, I think you have to try to emulate that, right? The FA Cup, all the domestic finals are one leg too. Why not make the Champions League also one leg? I think it's why it's always been one leg. Even look at the Copa Libertadores, which tried to do two legs for the longest time, but as we moved into the modern era, even Colmebol changed it from two legs to one leg. I just think it makes for a bigger occasion knowing that you just get one chance both teams go to a neutral venue and you duke it out over just one singular 90 minute match i think the immensity of that is just way more of a spectacle than doing one game and knowing you still get a second chance uh to win it in yeah. the, well, a second leg yeah i don't know man i got a weird take forming in my head and i think i'll have to spew it but i i feel that one leg finals are european Two leg finals are Latino. And I, I don't know why that makes sense to me, but I feel like the connection is there. Copa Libertadores at one point was two legs. The Liga Mekis final, two legs. Mm -hmm. It just feels right for some reason. But that one leg final in the in the European context, I think also feels very correct. Yeah. And I don't know what's the reasoning behind that, but maybe it's the way these atmospheres are built. Maybe it's the way these players play in these moments but i think the uefa champions league should always keep it one leg i don't yeah. ever want to see it two legs but i don't know I, I feel like i always growing up i always saw just two leg finals in terms of like mexican teams playing mm -hmm. in them or mm -hmm. south american team south american teams playing in them i think it'd be i think that fits the vibe but uh for europe i definitely want to keep it at just one leg man i don't know man i gotta think about that take a little bit more but it is really interesting how uh how we have an incredible final waiting for us at the Wembley Stadium. Yeah, it's gonna, it's be, gonna fun. be fun. Guys, thank you so much for an incredible stream. Make sure to give us a like on the way out. That would be very much appreciated. And as always, what a fucking stream. The chat was popping popping today and great and great questions once again. We'll be back for the Champions League semifinals because this tournament is still going. It feels like we just saw a final with this Madrid's Manchester City game, but we still have semifinals waiting for us. So let's get to it, man. We'll release our semifinal preview and predictions video very soon. And then we'll talk semifinal reactions when the games happen. Guys, thank you so much once again. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Peace. Peace.